like I said, basically just talking today about when to hire a brand designer. Um, and the first thing to kind of know about design in general um, is that graphic design as a medium is really all about communication. Um, it's taking complex, you know, thoughts and ideas and distilling them down into their like basic visual language um, and how to communicate that to people uh, in this visual medium that, you know, might not necessarily uh, be communicable with words. Um, that's like the beautiful thing about design to me is that it um, is really kind of transcends language. It transcends a lot of barriers that uh, exist in traditional communication. So um, the point of all that being that before you start designing anything, you have to think about what you're trying to communicate. Um, and that is so true when it comes to brand design. And when I say brand design, I mean, you know, logo, color palette, typography, of course, your website, your social media graphics, marketing collateral, you know, any of the things that go into your brand's look and feel and the way that your brand is presented to customers and potential customers. Um, so the first step really before you start diving into design work, which can be really tempting, you know, you start a business, you're so excited and you're like, I have this idea for this logo and it's this thing that I really love. Um, but if you haven't really started by thinking about, okay, but what do I want to say with this logo? Who do I want to say it to? Um, you know, what am I really getting at here? Um, that's just super important to start from that place rather than starting from a kind of um, what I think as like a visual forward um, way of designing, which is kind of just designing something that you think looks good, but maybe isn't necessarily communicating what you want it to. Um, in my mind, before you hire a designer, which, you know, as I said, can be a big investment, um, you really want to make sure that you can answer these three questions um, about your business, about your brand, uh, before you start jumping into the design phase of, of that process. Um, and what it boils down to, and something that Christina and I have both talked about with each other so much, is that um, it, it really boils down to you need to start with your marketing strategy. You need to know a little bit about strategically who you're trying to talk to and what you're trying to get across to them um, before you can start this process. So the three big questions for me are, one, do you know who your customer is? Two, do you know what other brands in your industry are doing? And three, do you know how to speak and write about your brand? Um, and writing in particular uh, when you get into web design because Spoiler alert, you need a lot of copy to have a successful website. You need your website to be saying something. Um, so if, if you don't have a handle on that kind of writing piece of it, um, it can be really hard to design something that is functional and that works for you. Um, so we'll dive in here a little bit to these questions. Um, the first one being, of course, do you know who your customer is? Um, you know, there's that old marketing adage that like if you're talking to no to everybody you're talking to nobody and I think this is something we learned a lot in FISO you know as a former cohort member uh, I'm sure all of you are really familiar with this advice in general um, you have to know who your customer is and your customer can't just be everyone you can't just go well I want to sell to everybody um, you know it's it's impossible to speak to everybody and to appeal to everybody. You know, people are different and they're individuals and, you know, being respectful of your customer's unique identity and what drives them, what their motivations are, um, is really the kind of the foundation, the bedrock of any client, any, you know, good business, any good brand. Um, so, you know, starting from that place can also help you inform what your design is going to be doing and how that design is going to speak to the intended audience. Um, you know, if you, for example, I'll talk about my branding. I am super passionate about working, like I said, with small business owners. I love working with other women owned businesses. Um, so my branding, as you guys can see, it's a lot of earth tones. I like pinks and mustard yellows. And, um, and I think all of that leans a little more feminine uh, and that's okay. That was a choice that I made because I said, you know, I really want to 
um, to have a little bit of a softer feel for my branding because that's the kind of client that I want to speak to. Um, so uh, knowing that that's the client that I want to speak to, I can make design decisions around that. Um, and I think that that's the case for every business owner. You just, you have to know um, who you're talking to and also think about how they want to be spoken to. Um, another big point is that you definitely need to be designing with your customer in mind first. Um, I often work with business owners who maybe they have an idea for something that they really wanted for their logo or their brand design in general. Um, and they have been thinking about this as they kind of have been formulating their business plan and getting ready to launch. And you get really attached to that idea um, before you really think about does this idea work for my business? Um, not just is this something that I like, does this work for me? Um, and of course, you know, as a business owner, you need to love your branding, your taste and your preferences are super important. And at the end of the day, I would never advise someone, you know, well, let's go with this thing that you hate because I think your customers are going to like it. I do, however, think that it's super important to know my customers are going to like this first. And then from there, you know, let's talk about ways that I can feel like it's really part of the identity that I want for my business. Um, and then another one, of course, is how will customers interact with your brand. Um, you need to know where your customers are hanging out, how you're going to get across to them. You know, is your marketing strategy really focused on social media? Um, if it is, are you focused on LinkedIn, which is very, you know, as we all know, kind of writing heavy, lots of people sharing articles. Um, are you going to be marketing primarily on Instagram, which is super visual? Um, so knowing where your customers are and how you're going to be trying to communicate with them uh, can really inform a lot about what you want to do with your brand design and what's going to be effective. Um, biggest point for this, for, for me, and kind of what I harp on with my clients a lot um, is that, that this comes um, super info in web design. Uh, until you know what your goals are for people using your website and what they're coming to your website for, what you want them to do once they get to your website, etc., you really can't design a website that is, you know, functional in any <laughs> sense of the word. Um, that's kind of the basic principle of user experience design or UX design is that uh, you really want to start with the user's perspective and go, okay, if I'm this person coming to this website, where does my eye go? What do I do? What's do? What do I, you know, naturally gravitate towards? Um, so all of that ties back into just knowing your customer and having a basic idea of, you know, what they want from your brand, what they're coming to your brand for, and how you might be able to talk to them in a way that that makes sense to them. Um, second big question uh, is, do you know what other brands in your industry are doing? Um, I often will kind of phrase this as, what are your competitors doing? And I've kind of started to move away from that. Um, as, you know, we all have talked about in FISO, I think, um, pushing kind of collaboration over competition is so important. And uh, I definitely don't think that you necessarily need to be viewing other brands in your industry through this competitive lens. I, I don't know that that's always helpful. Um, but you do need to know what other people in your industry are doing for two big reasons. Um, one is knowing what they did right and how you can do things that are similar. And two is how you just differentiate yourself from them. Um, so learning from other people's successes, um, can really just be like, uh, you know, going to somebody's Instagram who has a ton of followers and a really successful business that they're, you know, marketing on Instagram heavily and looking at like, okay, what types of content do they post? What color palette do they use? What, you know, do they have a lot of photos versus a lot of graphics? Um, looking at what other people do and seeing like, okay, what are some ideas that I can take from that that might work for me? Um, is a pretty tried and true method, especially when you're first diving into starting a business. Um, 
working on designing for that business, uh, you know, you, you can learn a lot from what other people are doing um, in a way that's not copying them, but just taking a look and kind of being aware of what other strategies other brands might be using. Um, and the other really important piece of that is differentiating yourself um, from other brands in your industry. Um, a, a big part of brand design is helping you stand out to customers. Um, and especially in today's world, I mean, it's people have thousands of options at their fingertips for every product and service on the planet. Um, so to make sure that you stand out in these crowded markets and these crowded online spaces, you need to make sure that your branding is something that's recognizable, um, that stands out, that pops, um, that's going to make a really good positive impression on someone just kind of at a glance. Um, I'm sure you guys have all heard that old marketing adage that um, a potential customer has to see a marketing message like seven times before it even sticks, before it registers that they have seen this message and they decide to take some action around it. Um, so having unique branding that stands out against your competitors is a big part of that. Um, if you are bombarding people with your marketing messages, but they look really similar, you know, say your Instagram graphics or your logo or your website looks really similar to what other brands in your industry are doing, even if those brands are really successful and you, you know, your thought was like, well, I want to do something like this because this seems to have worked for them. Um, if if you kind of approach it from that angle, what you may end up inadvertently doing is just kind of confusing your customers and getting, you know, brand and these other brands jumbled in someone's head. Um, you end up, you know, kind of subconsciously advertising for your competitors because you're not standing out enough. Um, and I definitely think, you know, you can see this a lot. There are certain design trends that pop up and I've definitely worked with clients before who come in and they're like, I've been seeing this kind of logo everywhere and I love it. And I really want this kind of logo. And you know, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not here to bash trends. I love the, a good design trend as much as the next person. But do you think that it's just important to consider that before you really dive into brand design that, um, is maybe perhaps not as unique as it could be to help you stand out, help you get your customer's attention. Um, and then the third point is, do you know how to speak and how to write about your brand? Um, this can be really different um, for different types of businesses. So uh, a big, um, thing that I've noticed in working with my clients and even in developing my own business is that to my mind, um, there's a big kind of difference um, between product-based businesses and service-based businesses when it comes to your brand design and when it's appropriate to start working on that. Um, if you're a product-based business, um, you know, especially, you know, a B2C business where you're just really trying to get people to your website or into your store to buy products. Um, you're appealing to a really wide market. Um, you know, in my mind, that is a, a, a space where it's more important to get the branding right from jump. And that can really have a big impact on how successful your business is when it launches um, and, you know, kind of how, how far your, your business can go, especially in the early times. Um, you know, when you look at a, a product, the packing, the logo of it, you know, the look and feel of a product can have such an impact on a consumer's decision whether or not to buy your product uh, that kind of winging it at the beginning or maybe, you know, not working with a designer or trying to DIY it at the beginning. Um, you know, it's not necessarily uh, that I think that that can't work. Um, but I do think that um, getting that right from jump can really go a long way towards helping your product get noticed and helping your customers, you know, want to purchase it. Um, with service-based businesses, it's a little bit different. Um, so, you know, often a service-based business is in a B2B space, um, you know, you're not trying to appeal to as wide of a market and you're working with a small number of clients usually, um, versus, you know, just trying to sell to the masses. Um, 
when that's the case, I think that you have a little bit more leeway um, in kind of getting that brand design right. You have a little bit more time on the front end to really figure out what your marketing strategy is and what you want to be saying with your brand design before you commit to something. Um, and you know, of course, both of these are just kind of like general observations that I've made. That's not to say that, you know, it's not worth it to really invest in your branding and your marketing strategy um, as a service provider before you launch. Um, and that's also not to say that you can't start a product based business, um, you know, with some kind of DIY branding uh, for the time being until you can afford something a little more advanced or a little more, um, you know, finessed. Um, but I often see with service based businesses, you know, if you haven't had clients working through your process, working through your service, whatever that might be, you often don't really know, um, what exactly your process needs to look like, um, what exactly your, you know, packages or services might need to be, um, you know, I definitely have run into this plenty in my own business. When I first started out, it was it felt a bit like the Wild West of just like, I know I want to these design packages and I have an idea of what I want to include in them, but let me try this out with different clients and different businesses and see, you know, what really works for the client. Because, you know, your idea of how a thing is going to go, how it's going to function, uh, might not necessarily line up with what the actual client experience is. Um, so uh, I think working through, you know, a few client projects on the front end before you really commit to a marketing strategy um, can be a really helpful thing. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, obviously, everybody needs a, some form of a logo, some form of a website to even start getting out there and selling at all. Um, but this is the case when I think that it, it might be appropriate to try and just kind of DIY that, keep it super simple. You know, if you are working on, you know, being some sort of service providing business, um, and if you just put up a really simple landing page for your website until you have fleshed out your whole process and really gotten a handle on what exactly you want to offer, that's okay. Um, I've certainly worked with clients before where, you know, they haven't necessarily worked through their process with a lot of different situations. They don't necessarily know the minutia and the ins and outs of what they want to offer. So when it comes time to create a website and it's like, okay, well, let's talk about what you offer. Let's talk about what your process is. What's the client experience look like? Um, you don't necessarily have those answers yet. You don't know. Uh, and I think that that's something that comes, you know, only from trying it out, learning, um, you know, looking at what different situations might, might call for. Um, so yeah, I think n knowing what you offer, um, before you start designing is, is the key to success for sure. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, you know, the big, big three things that I wanted to talk about. Um, and I'll kind of, you know, go a little bit more um, into what I think, when I think it would be appropriate to hire a designer, you know, once you kind of answered these basic questions. Um, and I, I mean, I think that it's, um, it's not necessarily like a, you have to have these things figured out. Don't hire a designer. You're going to waste your money. Um, I, I think that it's different for everybody. Um, and I think that if you um, can answer these questions before you start working with a designer, that's great. Um, on the flip side of that, uh, a lot of what I feel like I do throughout my design process with clients is kind of help guide them through this, these questions and, you know, make sure that we're thinking about these things on the front end um, before we dive into design work. And in my mind, you know, kind of any, any, any good designer who's, you know, up to snuff <laughs> is, is going to start from this kind of strategy place before we start designing. Um, so if you look for a designer who does offer that type of kind of holistic service, um, that's great. You know, that, that is, those are the questions that you need to be asking before you, you know, start design work. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say. <laughs> I kind of petered out there at the end. Sorry, I didn't have a better wrap up ending um, there, but 
Uh, I know Christina and I had talked about maybe doing some discussion questions and I definitely would love to open it up. You know, if anybody has any questions, um, drop those in the chat and just let me know, you know, what you guys are thinking and what you might want to know a little bit more about. Yay, that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that one question is, are you accepting new clients? <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. Uh, yes, I am. Um, not, you know, immediately, but I have some openings in like mid-April. Um, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Well, if nothing else, um, we'll definitely have some time in the breakouts. Um, we'll make sure that whatever table Molly's at, people rotate. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, question. Can you share this deck? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. I will. Um, I think I saw a way. And you know what? I just realized I need to turn my screen share off. I think there's a way in AirMeet to do it, right? I think so. Or if anything, we can email everybody too. I'll send the PDF out to everybody. I, I would be more than happy to share. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so, 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 so much. Yay. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you guys for listening and uh, and being here. And yeah, I'm excited to connect with everybody in this small room. Awesome. Um, yeah, and just so you know, like every time um, we do this, we'll have someone, we're thinking from the FISO communities. So we're going to lean into like the amazing expertise we have. Um, yeah, everybody's just showing the love. So we're going to end the session. We will see you all out in the networking area. And um, we're excited to, you know, also see you in probably three months for our next quarterly. All right, see you soon in the networking event. <laughs>